Hello and welcome to Tech with Briley. In today's live code hangout, we built a Flutter application that randomly generates workouts. The source code is available on GitHub under the MIT license. We've got some overview and uh, instructions for running the project. It's a random generator, a workout generator designed to help users create diverse and engaging bodyweight workouts. It's got a library of various exercises. The app randomly generates workouts and allows users to customize their routines. You can check out more about the purpose and how to uh, run it and contribute if you'd like in the readme. Well, here's how it works and then we'll take a quick look at the code. So it's just like basically a one page application. When you load the app, it generates a list of about five uh, randomly chosen exercises. You can regenerate that. If you don't feel like doing one of those today, you can just kind of delete it. You gotta drag it pretty far over there and removes it. Uh, you can add from a list of predefined exercises or add your own custom exercises. And that's pretty much it. So we're using the uh, Flutter material interface. We create an app, my app, and in our state we have one variable. So this we need one global variable for the dark mode toggle. And we render a material app with the random workout generator title and we'll determine uh, the theme, dark or light, based on the value of the theme. So it's pretty straightforward to make a dark mode toggle. And we're going to render one page, the workout page on the home, and we're going to pass in this state by reference to the page. Now, in order to define the exercises, we needed some data structures. Basic uh, data structure is an exercise, has a name, a description, and later we'll put some instructions there. Our workout page has some state, it gets the uh, toggle theme in dark mode from the parent page and, and you know it maps those in the constructor function here and we create some state uh, the state includes um, an empty list of exercises the ones that are chosen nothing yet and then all the exercises so this is just a big list of all of the options it's pretty easy to extend it and so far it hasn't been a performance problem so we'll keep it simple as long as we can so you uh, initialize the state, we generate a new workout. Uh, we've got a little helper function here that returns a bool to check if an exercise is currently in the workout. This is used to deduplicate the randomly generated workout as well as prevent the user from inserting the same exercise twice. It makes the list shorter also, so when you're browsing for exercises, you only see the ones that you haven't added. Uh, so we generate a workout, create a random number, making sure that their uh, exercises are empty and this could be a configuration variable but right now we're defaulting to five it grabs a random integer up to the exercises length and it checks if it's in the workout if not it's going to add that to the, to the workout removing exercises adding exercises we have a exercise dialog so we're going to add an exercise and it's going to take in the page context and it's essentially a dialogue that pops up so it's an alert dialogue to add one it's going to allow you to choose between um, defining your own exercise or creating a custom exercise so these are buttons that will show uh, dialogues the predefined list it checks if the available exercises are empty we're going to be able to dedupe with that and if so it's going to just display a list that we can't really um, there's nothing less to choose, but it gives you a little bit of a way of moving forward and choosing um, or adding your own custom one. We have a list view builder for each uh, item in there. But you can cancel, so you can go back and it'll just take you, the navigator, back. Or you can uh, create a new one. If there's no more exercises available, it'll let you move forward by showing you a button to create a custom exercise so this is actually a pretty subtle user experience flow and it'll be a bit hard for me to show how this works but essentially if you run through all of these exercises you'll have an option down here it'll sh show you a text that there's none left and you'll have an option to continue going forward uh, yes yeah, so and if you want to create your own exercise you just have a couple of uh, text fields we've got a name and a description field so it's following the same format and you can always back out or add and then it'll just grab the data from the controller and it'll add that and pop so the dialog will disappear kind of pops off the stack there and that's about it so we're just going to build um, the workout page and it's got these it's hidden behind the debug mode but it's going to show you this uh, icon up here 
to toggle the light or dark mode. And then it's going to build dismissible items for each of the exercises. It allows you to remove it. And when you dismiss it, they, you have the background color and the icon for delete. And it's going to give you the title and description of the exercise at that index point. And then here are the generated floating action items uh, that lets you uh, regenerate the uh, workout or show add exercise dialog, which is a multi-step flow. But that's about it. It's 300 lines of code and all generated by Claude in a discussion. Um, there were a couple of hiccups along the way, but the whole process took about an hour from start to finish. And really I was just kind of coaching and describing, you know, what I want to do, my goals and the improvements I noticed. Uh, I didn't have to think at the code level. I was able to stay at the concept level. This is a really great, uh, Workflow, it's very natural. I think a lot of people uh, can do this, though I will stress you have to still have um, an understanding of programming and kind of how Flutter works and how debuggers work and those type of things in order to, I think, to succeed. So there's a bit of a balance and you have to have some some prior knowledge to make you know effective use of these tools as well as just having clarity on like what your de design goals are and how to articulate those uh, but that's all to say that i believe these uh, agents are a great assistance but it still relies on a lot of you know experience and knowledge and capability from the human so i think they're uh, a good uh, companion but i don't see in pr in practice how uh, they could kind of um, be fully automated is fully autonomous and build build something that you're uh, desiring or expecting and if you'd like to check out this code it's open source on github feel free to uh, use it for your own needs and ideas or you can contribute to this project if you got some ideas you can open an issue or a pull request so uh, we welcome contributions from from everybody cool thanks for your time have a great day